Hi, John here. It's a weekend and we don't normally do weekend videos, but I figured I would try something new and basically what I want to talk to you about is you may be out there waiting for your next game and thinking, man, we should start recording these or we should start streaming these because we have such a great story to tell and I think there would be people interested or I might want to watch them later. I might want my kids to watch them at some point. And if you're thinking, should I do that? The answer from me to you is yes. You should record, you should stream, you should get your voice out there. I think that's very important and with the bar being so low today, as far as the technology we have catching up to the want to do things like that, I definitely think everyone deserves a chance to have their voice out there and heard. Now, you may have a multitude of motivations for it, ranging from I want to record my games to have something that we can watch later to I want to stream and build a community and have people listen to what we have to say at our table to I want to make this into a money-making venture. You may even be thinking, hey, we could be the next critical role. And if that's the case, I do want to caution you on that. That's not a very good way of thinking going into something like this. There's already a critical role. They are going strong. There's no indication that they may be stopping anytime soon. And using your voice to become the next this person is not an effective use of your voice, in my opinion. I think you're much better off trying to find your own voice, your own statement, what you want to say to the world, instead of trying to say what Critical Role is already saying over again. Though they do have good messages. I'm not trying to take away from that by any means, but in any case, if you're just wanting to record, every laptop just about has a camera. You can go to Best Buy and pick up a webcam for 30 bucks. It doesn't have to be anything special. Just put it over the table, put it somewhere where it can see everybody. You're good to go. You'll have to have a microphone too, and microphones can be a little more expensive. You could go with something like a Yeti that has omnidirectional pickup. You could have everybody with a headset on because a lot of people have gamer headsets at home. That's kind of a, you know... Everybody, we went through the quarantine, everybody has a headset just about now, so you don't have to necessarily go buy a new mic. If everybody has a headset or you have extras, just throw a headset on people, bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. If you're wanting to make money, or even really if you wanted to, even really if you wanted to cultivate a community out of it, you may want to be a little more uh, thorough and your equipment and that might mean getting a mixer getting three to seven individual microphones that are decent quality do you have to have a 300 dollars mic on everybody's table in order to play no is it going to make the end product better yes but when you start with a 50 dollars mic and rate the quality up to a 300 dollars mic there's a certain point where the returns on it start getting much, much smaller. If you are a true audiophile, which I am not, you will notice these differences, and people out there will notice a difference too. And it all comes down to a personal preference and how much money do you have that you want to put into this. There's nothing wrong with saying I have a $100 Blue Yeti, I have three laptops here with cameras. Everybody, just record your stuff, record your camera, I'll put it together in editing later. Nothing wrong with that. If you're wanting to make money, I would caution you. The TTRPG market is very big nowadays, but a lot of it is dominated by D&D. A lot of it is dominated by Wizards of the Coast, and up at the very echelon of actual plays, you have Critical Role, which has been taking a huge portion of the actual play eyes and ears for quite some time now. They had a perfect storm. They have 
seven talented people, which you are probably in a room right now with some talented folks or will be next time you play. I'm not trying to say it's purely on talent. They also have, a lot of them, a working portfolio. Like Matt Mercer has done so much in anime, so much in video games. Laura Bailey has done so much in anime, so much in video games. Travis Willingham, so much in anime, so much in video games. Ashley Johnson, I had a crush on when I was in diapers. Like, I was enamored with that girl as Chrissy Seaver in the 80s. May not have been the 80s. I don't remember the exact dates, but she has a long career. She has put in a lot of work, and she had name recognition. When people were like, hey, you want to watch this thing? It has Matt Mercer in it, or has Laura Bailey in it, has Ashley Johnson in it, has Travis Willingham in it. The other three, I'm not trying to put down their contributions, but I don't know their names, and I don't know what kind of name recognition they had beforehand. It's safe to say they had some, but in any case, don't go in thinking you're going to spend 3000 bucks on equipment and immediately make that back. That's not really... You could... But Critical Role also was sort of helped out by quarantine and everybody being inside, looking for some kind of entertainment. A lot of remote groups started up during quarantine, and as a result of that, you know, the audience was boosted by what was a great tragedy, and it has been a silver lining to that whole situation. Regardless of how you're going to go about it, it's very important that you remember that everybody is people. You have to come at it a certain way. If your group is not the type that's like wanting to make a career out of TTRPGs, if you tell them, hey, I want to start a stream, I want to start a podcast, it's going to be the next big thing, and they are not really excited about that, they're like, um, you can try, but I, I'm not sure about that, then... You need to listen to them because it's very important in the grand scheme of things that everybody has to have fun or the product is not going to be worthwhile. If everybody's not having fun, there's really no reason in playing. And if there's no reason in playing, there's no reason in recording you playing. If everybody's not having fun, people will be able to tell that in the product. Even the best actors, when they aren't feeling it, the product isn't good. You can find real-world examples all over the place of that. I streamed video games well before the idea of streaming TTRPGs came into my head. I streamed Splatoon, mostly. I did a little Diablo, a little other things here and there, but the one goal I had when I started streaming was to have my awkward butt be a little less awkward and to grow as a person by putting myself out there when I'm very introverted naturally. You can probably tell watching stuff. There are times when I regress and go back into my shell and I try to edit a lot of those times out and I try not to have it impact everybody else's fun, but it's still there. But it was a lot worse before I started streaming. So this has been a journey for me as well. I have had to learn how to project my voice. How to not sit here like this and be very, very quiet for no reason. I've had to learn that you're going to look stupid sometimes. You're going to look like an ass. Do the best you can. Be nice to people. And good things will happen. I had way more people than I ever thought would be interested in watching me play Splatoon. Like, it's not a huge game. It's not like I got Elden Ring early and people were flocking in because they love the game. Some people were flocking in because they love Splatoon, but in the beginning, I didn't even have a camera. My most watched streams were of Minecraft, and it was... In the window between Minecraft being popular and Minecraft once again getting popular, it was not popular when I was streaming it, and it was doing well for me. Probably should have kept streaming it, but I got to that point where I had gotten my affiliate status, and I was 
okay with not streaming anymore. It wasn't as fun as I wanted it to be. And I was okay with letting it go because, again, if it's not fun, if it's not doing something for you, if you've accomplished the growth you wanted to accomplish, there's no need for it. So have some priorities. Know what you want to accomplish with it. Have a good setup to accomplish those goals. If you have people around you that they don't want to be part of a community, then maybe you rethink that particular goal of yours because it's going to be hard if you're the only one plugging away at it to actually do that kind of a thing because a community starts with a lot of people. Make sure everybody in your group is on the same page. If one person isn't too happy with what's going on, then it could very easily show in the end product. If one person's not comfortable, if one person's not having fun, then you might want to think about whether or not it's the right fit for your particular group. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, if you don't want to be in the stream campaign, we can have a home campaign where you don't have to be on camera, you don't have to put yourself out there. Make sure you're taking care of your people along the way. Nobody likes it when somebody decides, I'm going to be a big star and you're going to be with me or you're going to be against me. That's, that's not a way to build anything. You're not building anything that way. It's negativity and we don't need more negative voices. We really don't. I know that contradicts what I said earlier about needing everybody's voice, but it is what it is. And now more on the technical side of things. If you are just wanting to record, to record, you can do that with headsets, laptop microphones, laptop cameras. You don't, you shouldn't really have to buy a whole lot of extra equipment. If you are wanting to record because you want to have a great product, you're going to have to get some sort of editing software. DaVinci is free. It's very complex. There are other free things out there. Most of them aren't great. If you have a Mac, that can get you very far because the Apple environment for such creative things is usually pretty good. We have Adobe that we use, and the good thing about Adobe is that you get a number of programs. So you can use InDesign for layouts. If you're writing TTRPGs, you can use Audition for your audio, and it comes with a lot of really useful things for editing the audio. You get Media Encoder, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, a lot of really good things. The big glaring downside of it is it is a subscription service and unless you are a student it's honestly exorbitantly expensive if you're not making money with it it's kind of tough to justify such a big expenditure if you are trying to build a good product you may also want to think about having individual mics rather than an omnidirectional mic or headsets you might want to get a little bit nicer mics. The ones we use in our main actual play setup, they are, I believe, $70 mics. They're not the best mics, but they're not bad. I would love to have the $300 shirts in front of everybody, but it's just not realistic for where we are as streamers or as people who have to feed kids. But uh, we do the best we can with what we have, and that's something you'll have to learn to do because you will reach a point where you're like, uh, I, that could sound better, or that camera could look better, and you've got to budget and be like, could I afford that? And if you can't, you're going to have to learn tricks. You're going to have to learn how to focus it manually instead of using the auto autofocus that doesn't work very well. You might have to bend instead of breaking on a few things but I will say I have found it very worthwhile when I was streaming for myself I got a lot of 
confidence from the fact that people were watching me, people were enjoying watching me, people were coming to hang out with me, of all people. And as a group, it has been really nice because I've seen that in the people I'm playing with too, my father-in-law and my wife. Not that my father-in-law needed any help with confidence. Just kidding. He has the same issues as everybody else, but... It's been nice to see them slowly coming out of their shell. And my wife is doing great voice work now. And she even saw an ad the other day that was looking for voice actors. And she was like, that might be pretty cool. I might want to put something together and go out for that. And I don't think that would have ever happened before we started streaming. But everybody's getting a little more comfortable. Rick or Steve, Steve or Rick at Rick Stevens PI, the other person in percentile vice, he has gotten to the point where he has guested on a few other people's videos at this point and probably will do more. And that's really cool. It's really cool to see because he is a very smart, very witty person. And it's not that he would have never done it, but already being in a stream kind of gave him the foot in the door where when somebody asked him, hey, you want to be on stream? He was like, oh, sure. And the invite came through Twitter and he started his Twitter to help promote our podcast and videos. So it's almost a direct result of doing our stream and podcast that he has branched out and he's made a lot of new friends and interacted with a lot of people he may have never interacted with before and I think that's really awesome and I think that's a big portion of the reason why I will tell anybody yeah you you probably should stream this has been a little talk from me to you about streaming and thanks for watching hope you have a great weekend come see us again soon we will be live Monday on percentile vice twitch.tv slash percentile vice we will be taping all of the weekly gabs for next week, this Monday. And then Thursday, we do our actual plays. I don't know what we're doing this week. We may change plans between now and then, but you can find us there at 7 p.m. Thanks for watching. Bye!